This is the second lecture on waves. In the first lecture, we learned the distinction between an oscillation and a wave. An oscillation is the one in which the particle does not leave its mean position, but simply oscillates about its mean position, either this way or that way. Whereas, a wave is a disturbance, which because of the disturbance caused by this oscillation, which travels in the medium and carries energy with it. Depending upon the, the direction of oscillation of the particle of the medium and the direction of propagation of wave, there are two types of waves. One where the particles travel, particles oscillate in a vertical direction, say in this direction and wave travels in a perpendicular direction. These are called transverse waves. On the other hand, there are waves in which particles oscillate around their mean position in the same direction as the direction of propagation of the wave. These are called longitudinal waves. So, we have two waves, two kinds of waves, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. And in this lecture, we shall build on this distinction between the longitudinal waves and transverse waves. So, depending on how particles of the medium move as the wave propagates, the waves have been classified as longitudinal or transverse. If the particle oscillates along the direction of propagation of the wave, then the wave is said to be longitudinal. If the direction of oscillation of the particles is perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation, then the wave is called a transverse wave. Here is a longitudinal wave. The direction of propagation of wave is to the right and because the particles oscillate like this, they get bunched. Somewhere the, the density increases and somewhere the density decreases. There is a bunching and where the density of these particles increases, we have compressions. Where the density of these particles decreases, they are further apart. That is a rarefaction. So, in a longitudinal wave, we have compressions and rarefactions and the wave travels along. When we speak, for example, we push air particles nearest our mouth. When we speak, if this is the particle, this starts moving. This affects the next particle, this affects the next particle and a wave train starts moving. And because the particles move in the same direction as the wave, direction of wave propagation, we have places where particles are bunched, where these are called um, compressions and places where particles are uh, further apart, those are the places called rarefactions. So, when we speak, a train of compression rarefaction travels from the source. Near the source uh, of emission, the waves travel in all directions. In fact, there is a spherical wave front, they travel in all directions. And I have shown you here just a section of that spherical uh, wave front. When we speak, the wave travels to the listener and what happens there? The sound waves enter the ear and you see, you must see this outer ear is, this is a sort of funnel and to, to force or collect the waves into the ear. So, these sound waves, they are funneled into the ear and they go through the ear canal and then they vibrate the ear drum. At the end of the canal, there is a drum and they vibrate the drum and this drum sends signal to the brain and uh, we say we have heard something. This is the process of hearing. This is the actual diagram of a human ear. You see the funnel shape here and then this is a long ear canal. At the end of the ear canal, you can see here is the ear drum which vibrates when the sound wave travels through the ear. The second type of wave is the transfer waves in which the particles move up and down and the wave travels along this direction, the perpendicular direction. Example of transverse waves are waves on water surface. You see, if you disturb water, then waves travel like this and particle keeps oscillating like this, wave travels in this direction. Or electromagnetic waves, light waves for example. In electromagnetic waves, the name suggests electromagnetic. So, here we have electric disturbance and oscillations and magnetic oscillations. Electric oscillations 
and magnetic oscillations in such a way that E cross B is gives the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. So, we have a electric field vector which vibrates and we have the magnetic field vector which vibrates. They both vibrate in directions perpendicular to each other. Here I show you the same thing the wave is propagating like this along the x axis along the y axis if this is the x axis this is y this is z then along the y axis is the electric vector. So, electric vector oscillates like this propagates like this oscillates and along the this direction we have the oscillations of the magnetic vector. So, magnetic vector and electric vector they oscillate in perpendicular planes. So, we have tried to show you this this is the electric vector and this is the magnetic vector and they vibrate in directions perpendicular to each other and such that the, the direction of propagation is given by the vector product of E and B vectors. So, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves they do not require any medium to propagate. I have told you already that we receive light from the sun and heat from the sun and in between sun and the earth there is almost vacuum. So, they do not need a medium they can travel through vacuum. Light and radio waves reaching us from distant objects are all electromagnetic waves they all travel through vacuum. When you see an object or listen to radio or watch TV or talk to your friends on a mobile or a satellite phone or cook your food in a microwave you are all making use of electromagnetic waves. Gamma rays, X rays and ultraviolet rays are also electromagnetic waves. The difference in all these different forms is the wavelength. Gamma rays and X rays have very short wavelength whereas, radio and infrared and visible waves have very long wavelength compared with gamma rays and X rays. The direction of propagation that is vector k is given by the direction of vector product E cross B I have told you already. The magnitudes of the vectors E and B are related they are not independent of each other in fact, the magnitude of B is B equal to E by C. So, you can write the electric field vector as E 0 which is the amplitude in the y direction. So, j cap sin k x minus omega t and b vector amplitude of b vector would be E 0 by c from this relation and then k cap sin k x minus omega t this is in the z direction and the relation omega by k is equal to mu lambda which is equal to c the velocity of the electromagnetic waves. Now, what happens if there are more than two waves? Suppose there are two waves moving on a string if they move in the same direction their displacements can be added at each point of the string otherwise we take the difference of the displacements if they are moving in the opposite direction. This is called this principle of superposition that is the displacements of the two waves moving in the same direction or opposite direction can be added or subtracted. Superposition of the two waves 1 and 2 as I have shown here in this graph gives wave 3 all that we have done is just added displacements at each point and later on we shall see that this green curve which is the wave 3 superposition of 1 and 2 the amplitude of this wave can be obtained as vector sum of the amplitudes of waves 1 and 2. The interaction of waves in this manner is also called interference. Let me show you again this is the displacement of the particle on a blue wave this is the displacement of the particle on the red wave and I add these displacements and this is the displacement of the particle on the superposed wave superposition of 1 and 2. Where the resulting waves have larger amplitudes the interference had to be constructive if the amplitudes is larger than the two waves then we say that the interference is constructive. If the amplitude decreases is smaller than the two individual waves then we say that the destructive interference has taken place. Here we see two waves they are in opposite phase and therefore, if I add the displacements of these two displacement everywhere would be 0 this is a displacement of the particle on the red wave 
this is the displacement of the particle on the blue wave and if I add these two they are in the opposite direction if I add these two the displacement would be 0. So, everywhere the displacement would be 0 here also you can see the when the two are added the displacement would be 0. It is not necessary that the interfering waves be of the same amplitude or same phase here I give you examples of these are waves of different amplitudes and different phases here the phase difference is I think pi by 4 here the phase difference is pi by 2 here the phase difference is pi, but they are different amplitudes therefore by adding displacements at each point we get this green wave. Now let us do these things mathematically suppose the two waves of the same frequency are travelling in the same direction say to the right then they may be represented by equations y 1 equal to a 1 sin k x minus omega t and y 2 equal to a 2 sin k x minus omega t plus theta the two waves may differ in phase by an angle theta. The resultant wave is as I, as I said we get by adding the displacements. So, y the resultant displacement is y 1 plus y 2 that is a 1 sin k x minus omega t plus y 2 and if I use trigonometry I can write y as a sin k x minus omega t plus phi theta was the original phase difference this phi is the phase of the wave which is the result of these two waves. So, a the amplitude a is given by a 1 square plus a 2 square plus 2 a 1 a 2 cos theta I told you that the amplitudes are added as vectors if there is no phase difference then this is a 1 plus a 2 a is equal to a 1 plus a 2 if the phase difference is pi then cos theta is minus 1 and a is simply a 1 minus a 2 and tan phi the new phase is a 2 sin theta by a 1 plus a 2 cos theta phi is the phase difference between the first wave and the resulting wave the resulting wave is still a sin wave see resulting wave is still a sin wave is still a sin wave if the frequencies of two interfering waves are not equal the resulting wave would not be a sine wave that is important to remember that the frequencies must be equal amplitudes and phases may not be equal but frequencies have to be equal and these are the equations for the amplitude and for the phases we can carry out a similar analysis if the two waves move in the opposite directions the principle of superposition applies there also suppose now that we have two waves of the same amplitude and frequency moving on a string in opposite directions one is moving with this the other is moving like this then what happens then we can write y 1 equal to a sin k x minus omega t and y 2 as a sin k x plus omega t I hope you remember that this plus sign is for the motion in the negative x direction and minus sign is the motion in the positive x direction the wave motion in the positive x direction. So, we have two waves in the opposite directions and we superimpose them that is we add the displacements. So, y is equal to y 1 plus y 2 and if you use trigonometry you can get y equal to 2 a sin k x into cos omega t and this is very important here. Why is it so important you see the t part has been separated from the x part this becomes now the amplitude of an oscillation and this becomes the oscillating part. So, cos omega t is the oscillating part and this is the amplitude of the oscillation. So, the result is that the parts depending upon x and t have separated that is important this means that the wave is no longer traveling you see the traveling wave has this equation k x minus omega t both are combined here the two are separate. So, therefore, this is a different kind of thing this means that the wave is not traveling because time part is now separated from the x part. What happens to these waves? These waves are called stationary or standing waves what is happening the string will be divided into various loops and each loop this loop this loop this loop each loop will oscillate as a whole why oscillate as a whole? because 2 a sin k x that is the the amplitude and depending upon x the amplitude vary, but they are the same in the same phase. Therefore, all of them 
would be in the same phase and all of them would be oscillating together. So, the whole string is broken up into loops and these loops travel up and down. This loop travels up and down, this loop travels up and down. Each segment vibrates independently. I would like to show you this motion of the uh, segments or loops. This I have told you already the string is broken up into loops. So, this loop oscillates like this. Cells are in the same phase, but they do not have the same amplitude. Here also this loop goes up and down, this loop goes up and down. What happens is this loop goes up and comes down and if, if, if it is done very rapidly, you will see things like this, a loop moving up and down, this loop also moving up and down and third loop also moving up and down and so on. These are called standing waves or stationary waves. This happens when there are two waves in the opposite directions, but how do we get two waves in the opposite direction? Obviously, we can get them by reflecting a wave uh, at the end of a string or something. If the end is closed, we have a string for example, whose one end is tied. So, the end is closed, so that it, it cannot move. At that end, the string cannot move. So, it has a trough move on reflection, the wave gets inverted. So, if this end is tied or fixed, then as the loop approaches here, you can see that the loop approaches here, then it gets reflected as this crest gets reflected as a trough. This disturbance gets reflected as this. If this end is tied, this end is fixed. You can see that. Let me show you again. These are the two, this one and this one and one goes up, the other goes down. So, the crest returns after reflection from a fixed end as a trough. That means, there is a phase difference of pi. So, between the incident wave and the reflected wave from a fixed end, there is a phase difference of pi. For example, if the incident wave is y i a sin k x minus omega t, what will happen to it after reflection from a fixed end? First, it will be travelling in the opposite direction. So, we will have k x plus omega t and then the amplitude is also reversed because of phase difference of pi. So, we will have y r the reflected wave would be minus a sin k x plus omega t. Now, let us see if the end is not fixed, it is not tied. So, that this end can also move. Now, what happens? Now, as the disturbance reaches this end, this comes back as a the crest comes back as a crest. That means, there is no phase difference. It just travels in the opposite direction, but there is no phase difference. So, in the case of a free end, the reflection takes place without any phase change. In this case, what will happen? Simply the sign will change. For a free end, the reflection would simply introduce a change in direction, not a change in phase. Now, suppose a string has one free end and one fixed end, that is this fixed end and this is free. This here the string can move, here the string cannot move, it is fixed. Then free end is necessarily an antinode. An antinode, I think you remember, is one where the displacement is maximum. At a node, there cannot be any displacement, therefore, fixed end is a node and free end is always an antinode. And between one node and the next antinode or one antinode and the next node, the phase the wavelength is lambda by 4. So, here we have the free end is necessarily an antinode, the fixed end is necessarily a node. Since there cannot be any displacement there, the stationary wave is formed between the node and the antinode. Recall that the distance between a node and the next antinode is lambda by 4. In the above diagram, we have shown only the fundamental mode. You see, we shall see later in the next lecture or lecture after that, that we can excite not only the fundamental frequency, but its, its uh, harmonics also. So, that we shall see next time. You see, in this lecture, we have developed further the concept of a longitudinal wave and a transverse wave. We have also learned the important principle of superposition that if there are two waves traveling on the same string say in the same direction or in the opposite direction, 
then we can get the resultant by adding displacement at each point. This gives rise to what are known as standing waves on a string if you have waves of the same frequency and same amplitude then you find that the waves traveling in opposite directions they interfere and the string is broken up into loops and each loop now oscillates independently. These are called standing waves. In the next lecture we shall try to explain again the formation of standing waves. This is a very important topic and we shall try to explain it again and we shall also do some exercises to, to consolidate the concepts learnt in these two lectures.